Hey there, it's Nathalie. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, oh, yeah, be sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and share me with your friends. Uh, and speaking of friends, my friend Melinda is from Ohio, and uh, one of the treats in Ohio is the P. Graham Dunn Factory and Clearance Cell. You know how I love something that's very economical. Well, her last trip there, she picked up six of these they were a quarter a piece and they're just thin MDF and so what I'm going to do is show you how to transform into this faux rusty paint technique it is like really easy uses some inexpensive sponges you see I called it inexpensive rather than cheap inexpensive sponges that you can get from Walmart and then like apple barrel paint uh, several different colors. I'll tell you which colors you're going to need. And you might need a paintbrush but uh, to put your base coat on. Anyway, don't go away and I'll show you how to duplicate this faux rust technique. You can use it on wood, MDF, canvas, and your kids if you, they'll hold still. Oh, I'm just kidding about that. So don't go away. I'll see you in a little bit. I have this cute little windmill that my friend gave me. It's uh, MDF. Anyway, I'm using pewter gray uh, apple barrel from Walmart and whatever size brush you want to use. One coat and I'm painting the back side and in a little bit I will tell you why I'm painting the back side but for right now I'm just going to put one coat on the whole thing and then also uh, if you're doing this be sure you catch like any drips that you have and the insides of the cut edge. I know you were probably wondering why did I paint the back side of this. So this is one coat on this uh, finished side. It's a little bit slick. I probably could have sanded it, but I'm a little bit lazy. And so uh, that paint just scratches off. And like here, the same thing. It scratches down to the white. Let me flip this over. Now, this will still scratch but not like it is on the front, okay? So that's the reason that I did this back side, this kind of like MDF side. Uh, the sponge I'm gonna use, I'm gonna sponge the galvanized look on here. So I'm gonna use this, it's torn off of one of these big round cheapo sponges that you can get like probably from the Dollar Tree or from Walmart. This one probably came from Walmart. Or you could use a sea sponge. But I'm, and I like their textures. They've got really neat textures, but I'm not going to use a sea sponge. I am going to use this. And so as you're looking at this, you could, there's different textures on here, and you can like pick out some areas if you wanted a little bit more texture. You could, you know, pinch off some pieces to give it some different height and depth. And I'm going to use gray, the pewter gray. This paint is all dry, so this is just my little leftover palette thing. So I'm going to use some pewter gray and some white. And I'll just kind of drizzle that in the top because I want that to mingle together. And then for my edges, I'm going to use burnt umber and chestnut. That's going to be my rusty parts. So I'm just going to touch this corner in. So the, one of the hardest things is to not do the same pattern, like to go up the same direction. You want to turn the sponge, a little bit more gray in that. And so this only has the one coat on it, and so this will, uh, this kind of acts as like the second coat. Let me put that underneath there so it'll hold it a little bit more stable. So be sure you rotate your sponge around a little bit. This is not going to be a very long video. You could use some like silver metallic if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. Uh, it doesn't really need that. Maybe just a little bit more white up in here. 
I don't want too much white. And if you wind up with too much of a, a predictable pattern where you've repeated it very much, then just go ahead and go back and touch that again with your sponge to uh, probably cat hair. Can you imagine that I have cat hair on my stuff? She's over there eating, and as soon as she heard me in here, she came in here so she could see what I was going to get into that she might need to help me with. Hence the name Kitty No. Uh, I have another over on my hall closet. I did a canvas in a uh, rusty technique, and I did some letters, attached some letters to the canvases. The, uh, it was done for a, a men's retreat and it said, you know, let your light shine. And so the letters were uh, added, the uh, stencil part of the letters and then just got some of the uh, MDF cutout letters. And I, but the canvas was what was painted rusty, but I don't have the, the rust technique on my, my blog, on my hall closet. It's how to attach letters to canvas that has been painted to look like rust. I hope that doesn't, I know that that doesn't make sense. It doesn't even make sense in my head. Anyway, so that's all the little blades that I'm gonna do right for this minute for you. I'll finish these off in a little while. And uh, so I'm gonna pause this and dry this, and then I'll come back and do this edge. Okay, I'm thinking this is looking pretty good. And that little spot right there, that's where the paint's still a little bit wet. But uh, So I have a whole sack of sponges. You can wash them and use them again. Uh, so I'm going to get one that's a little bit smaller, like that, to do my edges with. It doesn't have to be. It could, I could have used the other end of, of that sponge. Uh, it doesn't have to be a smaller sponge. But this one will work. Let me just kind of do that so I've got that little texture right there. So I've squeezed out a little bit on this, on this same plate, the pink and the yellow, ignore all that stuff, that's dry. Uh, dark brown and this chestnut color, so it's a little bit of uh, a rusty color. So you could use like cinnamon or nutmeg color. Oh, that sounds like cooking colors. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of touch that off on this edge, and you can see on the tip of my sponge you've got some of the red and some of the brown. And then I'm just going to go easy on this. I can always come back and add some more. Sometimes it's hard if you get too much paint. I'm going to touch it off a little bit more so it's just a little softer. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I have was holding on to this, but let me just zoom down. So hang on for a second. I'm going to try to make sure I don't get out of the frame. Here we go. Okay, so I don't want just a, like a clean line of that, and, and so now I'm touching into that where I've already like smudged off the paint, and I'm just going to do a couple of little rusty spots in the middle. Not, try not to be, you know, try to stay random. Try to stay random, that's what I want to say. Get some of that, touch some of that off. And then, of course, anywhere that you think that there might be some rust. And it doesn't have to be on windmill blades. You can do this on the edge of a canvas. You can do this on a piece of wood. If you want, if you had a little piece of wood, you know, like I know Walmart. And some of those Dollar Tree things that are like this kind of board almost, that they have like fall stuff or Easter stuff or Christmas stuff, you know, you could paint over that. And then you could do the rusty technique and then just do whatever you what else you want to do with that. Let's put some more rust spots in the middle here. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I mean, I am going to do the whole thing, but I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing. Okay, I think this is looking pretty good. Now, one of the other things is like to get in here, some of these inside spots. I may want to go ahead, instead of taking the chance of messing it up from the front, doing it from the back side. Just touching it with your sponge from the back. 
and then that way uh, not quite so heavy handed. Alright, and then I want to show you how to, in case you have a place that maybe you're not real crazy about. So for example, like this spot right here, and this one's a little bit more smudgy than I like. So I'm just going to go back to my other sponge, and I've got a little bit more gray and white on my palette here, my lovely palette. I'm going to touch that off because I don't want to have a whole lot of paint on there. And I just want to kind of break that up just a little bit, like that, so it's not quite so like stand out or smudgy looking. I mean, it is rust. So the other thing I want to show you, and this, it doesn't have to be done, but sometimes it doesn't hurt. Let me get a little spritz of water on here, just a tiny bit, put it over here on the side. I've got a little brush. And I'm going to get into some of this mix of this dark brown and the cinnamon color. And just do a little, don't make it like real painty outlined. I'm going to make a hard edge here, but then I'm going to soften it going in. Pick up a little bit more of that water because I want it to be able to flow off my brush. This is not like super important. It's just something I wanted to show you if you're doing something like this that needs just a little bit more detail. So clean edge by this and then soften it out. There, I'm going to do one down here. And the same thing where this connects. I don't know that you're going to find these, but uh, just in case that you need these pieces of information, okay? So edge there, get a little bit more dark brown, a little bit of water. And so basically I'm just kind of smudging that out. Give it a little separation, smudge it out. All right, I want to thank you for watching and for liking and subscribing and for sharing. I've already said that, but I, you know, I just can't say it enough. And uh, uh, I hope you come back and uh, I'll try to have something for you next time. Oh, and to hang this depends on how you want to hang it. I'm just going to use a sawtooth and some E6000 glue. That mean that's perfect. It holds just about everything. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.